my name is Colin, and in this episode of Let's Learn Blender, we'll be looking at a feature of Blender called Proportional Editing. Proportional Editing is a feature in Blender that acts kind of like a mode that you can turn off and on that aims to speed up your 3D modeling by allowing you to select and transform or grab more than what you actually have selected. Now, normally you're going to end up turning on and using proportional editing when you're in edit mode of a mesh when you're doing 3D modeling, but sometimes new Blender users will end up turning on proportional editing by accident using a keyboard shortcut when they're in object mode, which you can use proportional editing when you're in as well. What might happen is when a user is in object mode, and let's say they're working with multiple objects in their scene, I'm going to go ahead and press shift A on my keyboard to bring up my add menu, and I'm going to add, let's say, a a monkey into my scene and I'll tap G to move it over. Sometimes a new user in Blender will accidentally press a keyboard shortcut on their keyboard and I'll show you what that is in just a moment, which will enable proportional editing. And then suddenly when they're moving around objects in their scene, so I'll press G on my keyboard and maybe by accident they scroll up or down on their mouse wheel and they start moving that object around they might notice that other objects are being moved around at the same time. This is the same principle, and this is using the feature called proportional editing that allows you to select more than what you actually have selected. What the user accidentally did here is they pressed the letter O on their keyboard. The letter O turns on proportional editing as well as turns it off. And when I press letter O on my keyboard, it also enables this button up here, which is actually the proportional editing uh, button. So if you want to turn it off and on, you can do that. Now, normally you use proportional editing when you're in edit mode. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my monkey head just like that. And I'll select my cube and I'll go into edit mode with the tab key on my keyboard, of course. To simulate a process of 3D modeling in edit mode, I'm going to go ahead and select my mesh. In fact, I'm in vertex select mode. I'm going to right click on my mesh with all the vertices selected. And I'm going to say subdivide. And I'm going to go and turn up my subdivisions down here to Oh, let's say nine or so to get a nice dense mesh with lots of vertices all over the cube. When you are using proportional editing, uh, and I'll go ahead and press O to turn it on, and you select a sub object element like a vertex edge or face. So I'll go ahead and press G on my keyboard to grab that vertex and you move the vertex. You're going to notice that more vertices move with the vertex that you have selected. And that will depend on your sphere of influence. Now, what does that mean? Well, earlier on in this video, just a moment ago, I scrolled up or down to make a circle on my screen bigger or smaller. And this circle that you can see on my screen right now is my sphere of influence. And whatever vertex or sub object element is inside of the sphere, besides what I actually have selected, will also be affected by however I transform my selected in this case, vertex. You'll notice that as you get closer to the edge of the sphere of influence, the less it will affect the movement in some cases of those vertices. So you'll notice that as I move this vertex around, the vertices that are neighboring my selected vertice are moving more than the vertices towards the edge of this circle, which is actually, again, a 3D sphere of influence. So if I've warped my mesh and I'm happy with the way it looks, I can simply click and I've tried transformed my mesh in more than just the way that I've transformed that singular vertex. Of course, when you're 3D modeling, it would be a terribly slow process if I didn't have proportional editing turned on to simply move one vertice or one face or one edge at a time. So that's why proportional editing is such a powerful tool. So if I enable proportional editing and then I grab a vertex and move it, I get this nice smooth kind of fall off towards the edge of where I had my sphere of influence set to. And of course, I can make my sphere of influence if I press G and scroll, I can make it bigger and smaller. But this smooth fall off, that means that the vertices towards the edge of the sphere are affected less and less towards the edge. You can change that pattern up here next to the proportional editing button by changing the fall off shape. The default is smooth, but if I change the shape to sphere and I go ahead and press G to grab that same vertex and I maybe scroll down a little bit, you'll see that the shape is different. If I go ahead and right click to undo that, and I change my shape to, oh, let's say sharp, and I do the same thing. I press G and maybe Z on my keyboard to move that vertex straight up. You can see that my shape, my fall off is quite different. It's now quite a sharp 
pointy uh, steep slope towards that selected vertex. If I go ahead and press Control Z on my keyboard, I can go ahead and try a few other ones. There is a falloff called constant, which actually has no falloff at all. That means that if I have a selected vertex, and by the way, yes, you can have multiple selected vertices or even edges or faces, and you can do the same process with that. If I go ahead and press G now and move my mouse up, you'll notice that it's selecting all of the vertices evenly within my sphere of influence. So the amount of influence towards the edge of my sphere of influence is not decreasing at all. So that's a little bit different. I'll go ahead and press Control Z to undo. Now, where are you actually gonna use this when you're 3D modeling? Well, let's say you're modeling a character's head. And let's say you spend a lot of time modeling the character's facial features, like their nose and their cheekbones and their mouth and their ears. And maybe everything is not quite in the right proportions. Maybe their nose is too small, maybe their ears are too big. Well, what you could do in that case is maybe select one vertex on their mesh, or maybe even a few. You can hold the Shift key, of course, and select multiple vertices like that. And then you could turn on proportional editing with a smooth fall off shape or any fall off shape that you like. In this case, I'll select smooth and you could tap G on your keyboard and then move that part of your mesh. You could, of course, scroll up and down on your mouse to change the sphere of influence size. You can also, with proportional editing, scale and rotate. So if I tap S on my keyboard to scale and I change my sphere size and then I scale up or down by pulling my mouse in or out, it will bulge or shrink that part of that character's facial features. Of course, I can also tap R to rotate and it works in the same way. So as you can see, this is a super powerful feature that will really speed up your 3D modeling, especially in the later stages when you're tweaking your mesh to look exactly the way that you want it to be. So I'm gonna spend just a moment here and tweak the shape of this cube. I'll maybe grab some vertices around the mesh. Maybe I'll grab parts and maybe I'll change how they look and their proportions. Maybe I'll go over to this corner and select a few vertices and tap S to scale to make that corner bigger. Just to experiment a little bit here, if I go up to my fall off shapes, there is a fall off shape called random. And now I don't use this one very much, but it is kind of neat and might be useful to you in the future. If I choose a random fall off shape and I go and select a vertex, let's say on the bottom of my mesh, but of course you could use this anywhere. And then I grab that vertex and then I press Z to move it straight down. Well, you can see that the fall off will, in this case, choose random vertices around within that sphere of influence, the selected vertex in my case, and it'll move them or influence them in a random pattern. This could be useful if you're making a bumpy object like a terrain. I guess it's pretty useful sometimes, but I'll go ahead and click to make that permanent. Lastly, there are a few options in personal editing called connected only and projected from view that I'll go ahead and talk about. What I'll do though is I will press control Z many times to get my mesh back to the way it was like that. If I go up to the proportional editing kind of sub menu here and I turn on projected from view, what does that do? Well, if I go ahead and select a vertex, and of course, if I grab it and move it, all of the neighboring vertices will be affected with that given smooth fall off inside of a three dimensional sphere. But when you turn on proportional editing, with projected from view, you're really meant to use this from an orthographic view. Like if I press the one or three or seven keys on my numpad, or if I go up to, if I'm looking at my scene in a 3D perspective view, if I go over and turn on orthographic view, and then I go and click on one of these directions, like negative Y will take me to my front orthographic view in this case. If I have a vertex selected and I'm looking at my view from the front orthographic view, and I tap G with proportional editing turned on with projected from view that option turned on, the circle on my screen will now act less like a sphere and more like a circle that projects outwards and forwards to and away from my screen in a two dimensional way. So now my sphere of influence is more like a cylinder that's facing away from me. And so now if I move my selected vertex in this case and click, it didn't affect the mesh in a spherical way. 
it affected it more in a two-dimensional way. So everything along the top here is even. It doesn't curve away or down on the edges where the edge of my sphere would have been. Again, if I select a vertex on the side of my mesh and I go to my front view with the one key on my numpad and I tap G on my keyboard, it's not going to affect the neighboring vertices in the same way. You see that as I grab and pull out and then I orbit around, it will affect all of the vertices going all the way back from that front view and all the way forward in the same way because it treats this circle on my screen not like a sphere but instead like a big cylinder or a tube where the ends are facing me and facing away from me so no matter how far back any vertices are even if they're not inside of a circular kind of size they will be affected in the same way or with the same weight okay this typically only works where you would usually only use this option called projected from view from one of your orthographic views front side top or a view like that okay what does the last option do connected only well i'm gonna go ahead and press ctrl z a few times to get my mesh back to its default state with all of my subdivisions, of course. If I'm working on a mesh that has multiple parts, like a hand with different fingers and a thumb, or in this case, I'm gonna treat this cube like a face. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into face select mode, and I'm gonna use my circle select tool up here. I'm gonna quickly select a couple of eyes, right there with my shift key and then a very simple mouth this is kind of like a minecraft character and then i'll switch my selection tool back to just the selection box and then i'll tap e on my keyboard to extrude in my eyes and mouth and then maybe what i'll do is i'll deselect my eyes and extrude my mouth in i'll go ahead and tap e on my keyboard and extrude my mouth in in edit mode a little bit further if let's say i was modeling this 3d character as wonderful as it is and i wanted to select the bottom of the character's mouth down here so i'll go into let's say edge select mode and i'll select these edges right down there on the bottom lip and i want to pose the character's mouth in a different way and let's say right now i have proportional editing turned on i have the smooth fall off shape i'll turn off projected from view and i grab that bottom lip and i move it up and down well, it's affecting the upper lip as well of the character, which is maybe not what I want. What I can do in this case to just pose the character's bottom lip, besides making my sphere of influence smaller, which maybe won't move enough of the bottom lip in this case, maybe I want to have the sphere of influence a little bit bigger, is I can turn on connected only, and that will only influence vertices or sub-object elements that are connected directly within that sphere of influence. So if I go ahead and tap G now with connected only turned on, it will only affect connected directly sub-object elements within that sphere of influence. So as you can see, it makes this process quite a lot easier. You'll especially find this connected option handy as you're modeling, let's say again, fingers or toes. So if you select vertices or faces or edges on the side of a finger, you won't be transforming the neighboring finger or toe, okay? By the way, if you have multiple objects in your scene that you're editing all at the same time, so I'll go ahead and select all of these separate mesh objects that are all cubes, and I'll press tab to go into edit mode of all of them at the same time. If you have, if I go ahead and select a vertex in that first cube, if you have connected only turned on, you will not influence vertices or sub-object elements of the neighboring cube. If I don't have connected only turned on, you most likely will. So I hope you find proportional editing a handy tool to add to your repertoire of knowledge of 3D modeling in Blender. I'm gonna go ahead and very quickly with connected only turned on, I'll go ahead and quickly transform several of these cubes using different fall offs. So this is smooth. I'll go ahead and select the middle vertex on this cube and I'll change my fall off to sharp and tap G and Z and move that up. On this cube, I'll change my fall off to linear, which will create a fall off with straight edges like that. On the second to last cube right here, I will use inverse square. So G and then Z on my keyboard and I'll click right there. Last but not least, I will use random and G and then Z on my keyboard and move my mouse up and click. 
There we go. So that is the proportional editing feature in Blender. I hope you find it useful in your future of 3D modeling. That will be it for this video though. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below. It really helps with me and my channel and gets these videos more seen. If you wanna see more videos like this one in either Blender or in the Godot game engine, go ahead and click on subscribe and that bell icon below as well. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next for this channel. And that's where I communicate with all of you the most, except here on my YouTube channel, of course. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.